What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python with OpenCV tutorial. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is corner detection. Corner detection can actually be used for quite a few things. Mainly we're going to see it in like three-dimensional recreation. You can see it in motion tracking and also it gets used in uh, character recognition fairly frequently. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. Oh, we're going to be using the following image. Feel free to use this image or create your own. As usual, the image uh, for this tutorial is available at pythonprogramming.net for this tutorial. You can also uh, click the link in the description for this specific tutorial. So uh, that's the image we're going to use. And ideally, we're going to try to find all of the corners. Now, that said, it might be kind of hard to tell in this picture. I can tell, actually. You should be able to tell uh, that little the thing on the on the left that I drew there, I uh, drew it in Microsoft Paint, and as you can see, those the slanted lines have quite a bit of aliasing issues going on. Or um, so 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 what we're going to be doing is detecting corners, and, and what it's going to do is find all the corners. So with all that jaggedy edgeness going on there, a lot of corners are probably going to be detected if you let them be detected. So anyway. Um, and, and rightly so, those are corners, so keep that in mind. So now, um, what we're going to do is you'll need CV2 and NumPy imported. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is image, and that image that we are just looking at, I've got it saved. So CV2.imread to bring in the image. The image name that I called it was opencv-corner-detection-sample.jpg. And then we're going to gray it out. We're going to say cv2.convertColor. Uh, image cv2.color underscore bgr2 gray. Then finally, again, gray now is going to equal np uh, float32. We're just converting this to a float32 of gray. And that's mostly to satis satisfy the algorithm that we're going to use to actually find the corners. So now uh, corners is equal to cv2.goodfeatures2 track. Uh, and then against gray, we're going to find up to 100 of them. Um, 0 0.01 here. And um, basically, that's quality. Uh, and then finally, uh, the minimum distance between corners. So when you're running this algorithm, it's on what? How many are we willing to up, you know, find up to? Image quality, and then um, the the minimum, yeah, minimum distance between every time it finds a corner. So in the case of like slanty lines, like we've got, uh, if you put that number high enough, it's not going to catch those you know alias slides as often. Anyway, it'll still find them. It'll just make them few and far between. So that's corners, and then finally we're going to conv convert that to numpy.int zero of corners. At any point when we use NumPy and we do these conversions, feel free to print out the results. If you're not sure what it's going to look like, print it out. Generally, it's just data type conversions. Um, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about these conversions. It could just as easily be happening in the back end, um, and you really wouldn't have known these even existed. It just so happens that to work with CV, we got to do this stuff. So anyway, um, now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say for corner in corners, what do we want to do? X, Y equals corner dot rattle. And then we're going to create a circle now. So CV2 circle. And we're going to do this circle at on the image in the location of X, Y for that the center. Uh, the radius will be three color uh, 285 and then negative one will fill that bad boy in. Finally, cv2.mshow will show the corners on the image. And I think that's good. Let's run that. Okay, sure enough, we find pretty much all the corners possible. Um, I don't really see any other corners besides maybe in the inside of that E, that would have been nice, and the bottom of that Y should have been a corner, but we probably ran out of corners. So, for example, if we did 200, we might actually get all those filled in. Um, well, we did get down on the Y. We did not get on the inside of E. I'm guessing it's this, this aliasing over here that's really causing us trouble. 
Um, let's accept up to 20,000 corners. Nope, still don't get it in there, so maybe that's not, it's just not a corner, y'all. <laughs> it doesn't exist. But let's say you track 10 corners, right? It's just going to find 10 corners. So bam, 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 and then some over here. Okay. So you just want to make sure you're going to let as many corners show up as possible. It doesn't appear to actually um, give, like, weight to any of the corners. Like, obviously, the corners of the squares should be, like, immediately picked. But not necessarily are they actually picked. So um, anyway... So that's corner detection, and again, that would be used, uh, you, you could use corner detection to track objects' motions, um, or with 3D rendering, like, sometimes p you want to take a picture of something, and then maybe 3D print that something. If you can detect the corners, and then you can draw lines between the corners, you can help to kind of render that object uh, in 3D. So um, that's corner detection, and the other thing that people use it for is actually uh, character recognition. So if you detect the corners of characters and then draw lines between those corners, a lot of times the character actually comes to life. So, so it's using character recognition as well, especially if, if they're fat characters like we've got uh, going on here. If you kind of connected all, all these, these are maybe too fat, but if you connected all these dots, you would actually kind of see like, oh yeah, those are definitely, there's a shape going on there. The E would be kind of hard, but anyway, um, in the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is actually feature matching between images. So, so far, as far as like using object recognition of any type, we've done template recognition. Um, what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial is a little bit more advanced. So templates going to match almost identically based on a template, whereas what we're about to do is feature matching, which d doesn't necessarily, it may not be as accurate, but it's going to be a lot more nimble than template matching was. So anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever on this tutorial, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.